Okay, so this is my in class, my assessment that I gave my class. I'm going to go ahead and go over the solution. Um, I'm going to use Python for the calculation too. Okay, so here I have a one newton, I mean, I'm sorry, a one nanocoulomb charge and a five nanocoulomb charge. And this distance is 0.3 meters, but I put it there as a vector. So I have that. Uh, and the question is, what's the electric field at the location 0.7? So I'm way over here. So E equals right there. So I want to find the electric field there. So let's start, let's do this the formal way. This, this problem actually you could do two ways. Everything is in one dimension. So you don't have to write this out as a vector. You can just turn it into a vector at the end. Um, and I'll do it both ways, okay? So let's do it, the, let's, let me write it out the first simple way. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna call this X, let's call that R1 and that R2. And those are distance. So R1 would be uh, equal to 0.7 meters. R2 is equal to, uh, this is 0.3, that's 0 0.7, so this would be 0.4 meters. Now I can find them, both of these are going to have electric fields. They're both positive, right? Yeah. They're both positive that way. They're both in the positive x direction. So I can find the magnitudes of these and then find the x component of the total would just be E1 plus E2. So the electric field E1 is going to be K times Q1 over R1 squared, where K is 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. And Q1 is 1 times 10 to the negative 9th Coulombs. So I can calculate that. E1 is going to be equal to uh, 9 times 10 to the 9th times 1 times 10 to the negative 9th divided by this distance squared, and we said that was 0.7, so 0.7 meters squared. E2 is going to be equal to the same thing, 9 times 10 to the 9th times a charge of 5 times 10 to the negative 9th over the distance squared, which would be 0.4 squared. And I left off the units. And then the total E is just add these two together. Then as a vector, E would be the vector EX, 0, 0 newtons per coulomb. And I'm going to find that. I'm going to do it in Python. Okay, but well, let's do this the other way. Let's do it the vector way. So here I have the vector. Uh, the electric field is going to be equal to K times Q in general, R hat over the magnitude of R squared. So in that case, I need those R vectors. So in this case, R1 would be the vector uh, 0 0.700 meters. R2 is the vector 0. Actually, I can write R2 is going to be the vector. Uh, so let's just draw this right here. So here's my charge, and here's my location. So this is R charge, and this is R2. And this is RO, the observation location. So that R2 is actually going to be R observation minus R charge. So that's going to be equal to 0 0.700 minus the location of the charge, which is 0 0.300. And I get 0 0.400. And you could have done that just by thinking about it. Okay, And that's cool. The reason I did that the long way, because there are some cases where you can't just think about it. You know, if I had a charge up here and the electric field right there, I'd have to have that vector and that vector, and it's not so obvious. Okay. So I have my two vectors. Now I can say E1 vector. I need to find R hat. R1 hat is just going to be the magnitude of this is 0.7 divided by this, so it's going to be 1, 0, 0. R2 hat is also one zero zero. Okay, so E one is going to be uh, nine times ten to the ninth times one times ten to the negative ninth uh, times the vector one zero zero divided by the magnitude of this squared, which is just going to be point seven. And I'm going to do this in Python the lo the, the correct way. And then E two would be nine times ten to the ninth times five times ten to the negative ninth over 
0.4 squared, 1, 0, 0, and then I'll add those two together. Okay, let's switch over to uh, Python here. Okay, so let's enter in uh, k equals 9 times 10 to the ninth. Let's q1 is going to be equal to, um, what did I say, 5e negative 9. q2 is equal to, um, no, q1 was 1 times 10 to the negative 9. And this is 5 times 10 to the negative 9. Okay, now let's do this the first way. Let's just say r1 is equal to 0.7, r2 is equal to 0.4, e1 is equal to k times q1 uh, divided by r1 squared, e2 is equal to k times q2 divided by r2 squared, and then the total e is just going to be e1 plus e2, and then let's call it ex, and then e is the vector ex00 zero, zero, and let's print that out. Oops, print e no e equals e e total and then units newtons per coulomb. And let's run that. So there you go. There's my electric field. It's like 300 newtons per coulomb in the x direction. Now let's do this again the other way. So now I'm going to you can rename variables it doesn't really matter. I'm going to go back over and say r1 is the vector. Uh, 0 0.700, zero, R2 is the vector, let's actually do it the right way, RO is vector 0 0.700, zero. I should do it really for the other one too, uh, R charge was vector um, 0 0.300, zero. so R2 is R observation minus R charge. And I don't even need to print that. Now I'm going to say E1 is equal to K times Q1 times the unit vector R, which is just norm R1, divided by the magnitude of R1 squared. E2 is the same thing, except with the twos in there. K times Q2 times norm R2 divided by mag r2 squared. E equals E1 plus E2. And then I'm just going to print the same thing. And let's run it. Same thing. OK, now the, the nice thing about this second way is that, like I said, if, if they're not easy numbers, if they're not right on the x-axis, it's easier to deal with. Um, but it's still the same idea. So there you go. That's the solution to that problem. Hope you enjoyed it.